Welcome. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Submission Fishing Live. Fix my hat here. Looks crooked. I'm your host, Muto. Welcome back. It's our job or our quest. Gear Baby Black Belt and Fishing. How you guys doing tonight? Got a good show for you. So basically, we're going to go over a lot of um, the, the new like uh, changes that are coming up in the new year of 2023 so there's lots of changes particularly actually mostly for rockfish um rockfish changes and some are really some really interesting stuff and it's kind of complicated i've read over it like you know 10 times today and yesterday trying to you know get it figured out it's pretty plain it's a pretty short article and stuff like that but it's um there's a lot to it and it's kind of a lot to understand so we'll go over it uh, it's pretty interesting some bad stuff there's some good stuff um so, yeah, we'll go over it and get you guys ready for next year. Let's see who we got here. Arnie, what's going on? Number one, Oos, welcome to the show. Benji, what's going on, man? Glad you could join us. Good to see you again. Todd, TV Metal Art, welcome back. Good to see you. Blue Water Pines 2, what's going on, man? Welcome. Very cool here on the island. How are you all? Which island? Hawaii? Or Catalina? Let us know. Captain Dan, welcome. North County Oost. That's right, North County San Diego. Leonard, what's going on, man? Welcome. Benji, you down with the flu? Oh, man. Hopefully you get better. You catch the Rona or just the regular flu? Yeah, it's been going around. It's that time of year. And everybody's been getting it. Take some vitamins. Stay safe. Hopefully you get better soon. Man, right in time for Christmas, too. That sucks. Over the islands of oh, Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, off the Gulf Coast. Oh, awesome. I have no idea where that is, but I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> I, I'm so unfamiliar with Florida, but I'm learning. Every time I go back there and visit my place, it's like um, I, I explore it a little more and try to learn it. That's awesome. Thank you for joining. Cave Dog, what's going on, man? Cal, what's, what's up? Oliver SD Fishing. Hey, how's it going, man? Welcome to the show. Andre, what's up? Oos. Regular flu. Well, that's good to hear. If you guys uh, are new to the show and you're seeing people type Oos, just means that they've liked the show. So if you guys could like the show, uh, help get the exposure out right now. And if you guys know anybody that likes fishing, especially here in California, uh, let them know we're going to be talking some of these changes. Um, I know we, we just, it's a couple days away and we go out there and um, we don't really keep in line with it but you want to be in compliance for sure so lots of things have changed you guys all survived from the show last week huh? or yesterday man that was a long one if you guys watch fishy hour they did like the christmas special <laughs> it was like another that it was like three hours or something like that crazy it's good stuff though i like hearing from you guys <clears throat> always good times let's see here in the news We did have some new stuff. I know Captain Dan was sending me some things. Um, one of the things was like the, for the CCA, you know, we talked about not the CCA, but the 30 for 30, where they're doing the, trying to take, you know, 30% of the land for conservation. And unfortunately, like in the new CCA email, uh, I couldn't find like a link to it. They, they didn't have it up on their page, but the email is basically saying, you know, unfortunately, a lot of the communications and stuff have broken down. Um, and the, the CCA are people that, we're representing the CCA, uh, you know, the Coastal Conservation Association. They've been kind of been removed from like the talks, basically, you know, where there was they were kind of promised a panel to have input and saying kind of what goes on. And it seems like, unfortunately, they've been, you know, shut out of that. And, you know, here we are trying to figure it out. Or, or unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have much of a say. It's, it's the fishing community or the uh, CCA and council coastal conservations is not going to have the input that they would have had or that kind of that they were promised that they were going to have. So that kind of sucks. It's all kind of boiled down to closed door um, negotiations and stuff like that. For those of you guys that are curious, the 30 for 30, you can you know watch the show, I think from two weeks ago with Kevin, uh, basically, you know, government's trying to take uh, 30% of the land and water and, and the coastal waters and, uh, for what they call conservation, but really they're not conserving anything. They just basically close it down and then nothing really happens with it. 
Um, you know, they've already just taken, they already have MPAs. So that, I don't know, that was one of the things kind of on the agenda. The MPAs are the uh, marine protected areas that we have in Southern California that you can't fish. Um, you can't really disturb anything down there. Uh, you can't fish. Not all, actually, that's not true. Not all MPAs are the same. You can fish in some MPAs or you can fish for different species. Like Dana Point's MPA is like based around like shellfish and like urchins and like low tide, tide pools and stuff like that. And you can actually fish in the one like a Dana Point, but some off of like um, La Jolla, the North one, uh, the MPA that like you can fish for like bait fish and stuff, but that's about it. And then the other one, you can't fish anything. You can't even put a line in the water. Um, and I know one of the things that we're trying to get on the docket was um, like, were they going to include the existing MPAs with the 30% you know, of the land that they're trying to take, you know, because they just basically sold their waters away, took 500 square miles just to put in the wind farms. And I mean, is that going to be, these are the things we don't really know. And it, it's unfortunate that we're, you know, kind of locked out of these conversations because if they end up not including the MPAs and not including the 500 square miles, I mean, you're, you're legit, you're, you're going to be eating up a lot more than 30%. You know, but that's just how they're going to do it. They're going to act like these other things aren't included. And then it goes from 30 to 30 to 40 for 40, you know, stuff like that. Just absolutely atrocious. So that was some unfortunate news, but, you know, just got to keep the fight, guys. Go out there, just stay active, let your voice be heard. And just got to keep fighting, man. Fight for the fish. Ken Fishing Fool, Ooh, what's going on, man? What's up? Oliver SD Fishing. What's going on, man? Welcome to the show. Carl Black. Oos. Welcome. Tyler, what's going on, man? Got there fishing, slaying those tuna. Let's see what else we got here. If anything else written on the news wise. Um, there is one other thing, and I'll put the article down to you. Another one is that goes into like the conservation stuff. Um it looks like in, I forgot what this is. Oh yeah. on the, So basically on the East coast from like Florida to Massachusetts, they're basically putting in speed limits on boats. And the whole point is, I'll put the article in here. One of the whole points of what they're trying to do is preserve the right well. And one of the things this goes down to is how we were talking about they a lot of times fishermen get blamed especially out here on the west coast right for like pretty much all the problems that happen whether it's uh sharks or whatever it, it's always chocks chocks up to fishermen but then they go down and, and build whatever they want and this is sort of another one of those things where um the current administration is putting in place a um a speed let me bring it up here on my thing basically a speed regulation on all boats over 35 feet which is kind of crazy. Um, and this this is, doesn't affect us, guys, but it, it definitely can. So this is where you got to keep your um, keep aware of these things and stay involved. Because even though it happens on the East Coast, I guarantee you it'll come here if they, you know they can get away with it. Um, so right here, thirty five motorboats over thirty five feet from Florida, Massachusetts. Um, they're putting basically an 11, I think it's a 10 knots. So the restricting speeds from 10 knots, uh, which is basically 11.5 miles an hour for all boats over 35 feet for up to seven months out of the year and up to hundred miles, you know, out for the coast. What's crazy about this is what some of the arguments are that boats can't even get on plane at that speed, you know, and you're creating safety hazards with you know, putting the fishermen at risk and stuff like that because the boats list, they can't get on plane. Um, then you hurt the fishing industry because people that were able to do uh, day trips, you know, half day trips, two day trips, or like a quarter day trip, they can't go as far and they can't even get out to a lot of the proper fishing grounds because now they have to, to watch the speed. Now the um, right well, I believe is what it is, which is, that's all good and fine. I think it's an endangered species. There was some numbers in here. Uh, yeah, there's only 350 right wells left. So, I mean, obviously nobody wants to see the right well 
go extinct. No fisherman wants that. But when you start actually looking at uh, the numbers, it's pretty insane. So here's here. In the statement admitted, however, there have only been... So here you go, guys. Here's the, here's the government overreach on boaters and fishermen that you might have seen. In 15 years, the last 15 years, there have only been five well, five deadly whale strikes by boats between 35 and 65 feet length over the last 15 years. What is that? One whale every three years gets hit by those boats and boats over 65 feet already have, you know, the subject restrictions. Um, so it's just crazy. And then there was some other stat here, like they'd never seen one in the federal waters even been hit. Um, and you have some of the rebuttals here. They can't even steer, you know, 10 knots. It just becomes a problem, you know, for crew and everybody. You know, when you reduce speeds like that, it's actually not that safe. Steering becomes a problem. Anybody that is, driven a boat or a larger boat, it becomes even more pronounced kind of the slower you go and stuff like that, you know, it gets harder to maneuver, but just more craziness guys. You know, once we see the 30 for 30, the MPA is going up, you know, New Jersey's already putting the wind farms out. We're losing 500 square miles of our fishing water. And then you just get crazy stuff like this. Um, it's just nuts. And even though this is the East coast, it, once they can get away with this stuff, the, it's just, it'll, it starts to happen over here. You know, and that's what we got to fight for. And these are the things that, you know, I just, it's kind of depressing. I got to bring them to your attention, but if I don't talk about it, you know, nobody else is out there talking about it. So I want you guys to just all be informed. Like I said, if we want to fish and we want our kids to fish and our grandkids to fish, uh, this is the BS that we're unfortunately constantly fighting. Um, but yeah, here's the article. If you guys want to check it out, there was some other stat here too, where it was like, uh, I'm trying to think. But they basically it was like there wasn't even they hadn't even found the anything in the federal waters where like a boat has ever actually hit one of these whales. So it's it's just crazy that, that you put these laws in for basically no reason. It doesn't even like need to exist. It's not a problem. It's not an issue. It, it's not causing any harm. But what it does is it it hurts boats. They hate boaters. They hate fishermen. So it, you know. That, that's what they do. It's sort of like the fake conservation, you know, where they they put in the wind farms and they're going to go destroy all of our land. But then they say they don't talk about that. And nobody brings that up. But then they say, oh, but we're going to lower the speed limit so these whales don't get hit. You know, it's that fake conservation that we talked about. Fishermen are the real conservationists. You guys know that. We know that. And, you know, it's just one of those things where they it's kind of like the bait and switch. They say, oh, well, we're, look, we're lowering the speed limit so these whales don't get hurt. And everybody, like, people that don't know or don't understand, they just think it's great, you know. And they're like, oh, yeah, we're saving the whales. We're saving the whales, even though the whales aren't dying. And yet it draws the attention away from them basically drilling into the ocean, putting in cables, uh, putting just thousands of square miles of these wind farms in that are basically killing birds, killing sea life, destroying the ocean floor. Um, on a much, much larger scale than any of these boats are. So it's just the old bait and switch. It's like, we're the fall guys. It's really just a damn shame. And I think one of the, I think negative things that come from this is when you see that some of the people that were kind of angry about it or protesting it is a lot of it's like fishermen and captains, but you know, the government makes enemies of people that really know the water more than anybody right like who knows the waters better than commercial fishermen or people that drive the tankers and stuff like people that are legitimately on the water all the time fishermen know the real fish counts they know where the fish are um they know the well migrating patterns the you know, boats that bring the tankers across and you know you start making enemies out of the people that really want to preserve the fishery and stuff and it's really a shame because what happens when fishermen stop reporting numbers and just stop basically caring. And then it's just, it's not good for anybody. It's just a terrible situation. So like I said, here on the West coast, it's not affecting us, but I just don't want it to sneak up on us guys. So even though it's East coast, we got to fight for them too. But it's all about it. You know, our fishing rights, we, we got to stand up for it one way or the other. Let's see what we got here. 
catching up on the chat. Yeah, that is the East Coast. We were in the Gulf. I used to fish the Atlantic with Captain Father. I don't think that is the Gulf Coast, though. Yeah, not not too much. Yeah. Let's see who else we got in the house. It's like nobody knew. Captain Dan, I needed 10 knots. Yeah, so here we go. I needed 10 knots with a 90-foot sprint. I ran to navigate safely. In all the years I've run boats, the only thing I struck was a tire. Konatani sucked up one in one of the e-props. Yeah, you know, and you're, you're a longtime captain, and you understand. Right? You get it. It's crazy. Yeah, it is, man. It's just, it, it's basically acting like acting like they're doing something just to kind of pull the wool over our eyes but enough of the depression <laughs> let's move on to some more positive stuff but if we don't talk about it man nobody will you know and I, I you just don't want to wake up one day and be like hey how did that happen i was wondering what's worse seeing it coming and, and watching it happen like the slow death uh no pun intended or you just let it shock us I guess there is no it's like or is ignorance bliss that 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 could be a thing too. Like maybe there is no right answer. Uh, other things in news: Spotty Bulls going on, guys. Spotted Bay Bass Fishing Tournament. If you guys want to join that, it's like a seven month long fishing tournament going on, and it's in Orange County, Los Angeles County, San Diego County. Um, I think LA and Orange County have their different uh, fishing schedule than San Diego County. So if you want to fish both, you can. But um, the first round of tournament is coming up in January. So if you guys want to sign up for that, there's different leagues. So you know, if you want to be a pro, a master, weekend warrior, whatever you want, uh, might be good to go test yourself. So definitely sign up for that. You can go to spottybull.com, uh, check it out, and then you'll join the Discord. And it's all done online. And then there's fishing dates. It's really well organized. So super good stuff, guys. So definitely go join that. And... I think that was it as far as news. So let's get into it. Yeah. So basically we're going to talk about the fishing regulations. So like I said, if you guys go, anybody that wants to go over some of the changes, we're going to do it right now. Uh, I think some of it's kind of fun. Like I said, some of it's not so hot, but at least in this situation, they took, they took fishing from us, but they gave us some too. So uh, it's pretty cool. And then, we can talk about it and then we'll go over some of the nuances. Yeah, and it should be good. And I'll put the link here for you guys. And th this news just dropped, I think, yeah, December 20th. So two days ago, they put the article out. I know they, you know, talked about the changes, but we didn't really hear much. But now we kind of have like the concrete details about what they want to do. And then I'll pull it up on my page here. But there's a link if you guys want it. So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's see, recent news. So we talked about the ground fish changes. And so basically, guys, what we're dealing with is currently in California, we have the rock fishing season is it ends December 31st every year. And then it basically starts. It's closed for three months. So January, February, March. And then in April, it, it would open up. Right. And pretty much all ground fish were included in this your sheep head, sculpin, it was kind of a blanket thing. So we had um, the three months closure and then the rest of the year we can fish it. Now we had a depth limit. This is the current laws of six or 100, 100 fathoms, which is 600 feet. If you guys want to know the math, just fathom is six feet. So whenever somebody says fathom, just multiply it by six and then you'll get your number. So we we're able to fish 600 feet um, within the RCA line. And that's that line that kind of goes down the coast where you kind of had to fish into. So that's currently what we have now in 2023. Uh, this is what we're dealing with here. So uh, changes are. So the, so for near shore rockfish, so Cabazon greenlings. Now we're going to go over this a little bit more. So near shore rockfish, Cabazon and greenlings are closed January 1st through March 31st. Right. So that's basically the same. It's closed for those three months. 
and then it opens up to all depths January 1st or April 1st through September 15th. So it's for all depths that it's open. They don't have a depth limit, but the it's only about five and a half months. So it's April through September. So it used to be April through December 31st. So they've shortened it big time, like almost more than half. You you get less less than half the month. I think it's five and a half months. So now only half the year you're able to fish uh, the near shore rockfish. Now there's something interesting you guys have to understand here is we're talking about near shore rockfish. And we're going to get into this later because you'll see here where we've got shelf and slope species. Now this never was really a thing until now where we got to kind of understand what the differences in the fish are. So those ones are closed. We're only going to have the near shore fish for basically five and a half months. Now, some of the other changes though, for all other rockfish, for shelf and slope species and lean cod is closed January 1st through March 31st. So that remains the same. That, that closure. So basically that three month closure that we've been dealing with forever, that, that remains the same, that, that hasn't changed. But now, open at all depths, April through April 1st through, April, through September 15th, you're able to fish it. And then from September 16th through December 31st, the take of shelf and slope rockfish and lean cod is now open, seaward of the 50 fathom RCA line, uh, take is prohibited shoreward of the 50 fathom RCA line. Uh, regulation still to the cow cod thing. Okay, so what this means is, well, let's unpack this a little bit. So shelf and slope species from January, I mean, from April 1st to September 15th is open. So near shore, shelf and slope species, all depths. So this is a good change because we used to have the depth limit. So from April 1st, September 15th, you can fish near shore, the slope, um, and the shelf rockfish at all depths. Now, September 15th, it closes only for the near shore rockfish, but you can still fish the shelf and slope rockfish from September 16th all the way to December 31st. But you have to fish them deeper. So that RCA line that it, that currently exists along the coast. So basically from the seaward 50 fathom line, you can fish for them. Shoreward of the fish, fishing fathom line is prohibited. So after that September 15th, you cannot fish from the 50 fathom RCA line into the coast. You can go off the coast to that line and you can fish the shelf and slope species all year long. So I know it's really freaking confusing, but we get near shore, near shore, no limits for five and a half months or no depth limit, shelf rockfish, no depth limits for five and a half months. But then for the rest of the year, you can still fish them, but you can't go shallow for them anymore, if that makes sense. So you have to go after that five month period, September 15th, we have to go deep and you cannot get the near shore fish anymore. But they don't really, they don't exist that far, so it's not that big of a problem. So that's kind of how they're, I think, I think that's how they're managing saving the nearshore fish. And one of the reasons they're doing this, guys, is because the bronze, I think it's like the bronze spotted rockfish and then like the quillback or something like that. There, there's two species that are really been a problem in the nearshore fishing, even though the current take of those two fish have only been, I think, one fish each of the two, but it, it's still been a problem. And I think that's kind of been their biggest concern of those fish. And then there's some more nuance to this too, guys, but let me see if you guys have any questions here. All these years. Yeah. Only, oh yeah. You guys still talk about it. that's crazy, huh? Those stupid whales. Danny Perez. Oos, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Pohukai. Oos. Welcome. Okay. So we're moving on. So there's other, some other cool stuff in here, guys. So we do have we, we do have year round fishing open all depths for the the um, near shore and offshore. So here's one of the important things, and this isn't something that we really had to deal with before because the rock fishing, like I said, was all 
kind of congruent with all the species where we had from what after from we had april 1st to december 31st we were able to just fish them all up to uh, the 100 fathoms no matter what so it was it was actually a lot simpler and they pretty much included everything in there but this is where you have to understand what we're talking about so shallow uh, near shore rockfish we've got the black and yellow the grass the kelp the china and the gopher and these are pretty common you guys we see these a lot in the kelp so the shallow near for near shore rockfish are only available for basically five and a half months out of the year these are the ones we can catch after september 15th we cannot target these fish these are the near shore shallow rockfish and there's um there's a guide in here too oh yeah here you go so if you guys want to check out the website and these are all the ones we're pretty familiar with right gopher fish these are super common out here uh, the copper rockfish where's the other one uh, tree fish yeah there's lots of those out there the black and yellow but i think it's like these uh quill back and some of the bronze spotted is what they're really worried about that are problem grass rockfish you know we got it, tons of those kelp rockfish so these ones were only available five and a half months Here's some more near shore stuff. <clears throat> and then we have the shelf rockfish. Now this is a, and the slope rockfish. So now we have three different categories. So these ones, the shelf rockfish and slope rockfish, we can fish these bad boys all year round to any, any depth, except after September 15th, you cannot go shallow um, for any of these. So basically like the Boccaccio, you know, salmon grouper, um, and canary and stuff like that. The rosies in here looks like the starback. We can catch these year round, not year round. I'm sorry. From April 1st to December 31st, basically, basically like our current rockfish standards are, and at unlimited depths. Uh, so these are the shelf rockfish. You know, some of our popular ones. We got the Boccaccio, chili pepper, uh, which is pretty good because these are really some of the most popular rockfish that we have, right? Yellow eye, I don't think you can catch anyways. Uh, what else? Yeah, the rosy, freckled rockfish, flag rockfish. So these, these are all... Actually, I did probably was some of the most popular fish. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think most people target like the kelp and the kelp fish and stuff. I mean, it does. It, it happens and they're good eating. But usually when you fish, this is the stuff we're fishing for anyways, which is pretty cool. And then there's the slope rockfish. Um, which is basically the abora or the aurora black gill dark splotted let's look at some of these red banded i don't think i catch so i think these are some of the fish that we're going to get more um with those open open regulations for the open depth so it's just something you guys got to remember again these links are all in the california page near shore rockfish shelf rockfish and slope rockfish so you're gonna have to know this is where you're gonna have to do your homework you're gonna have to know which category these ones exist depending what time of year you're fishing and where you're fishing so don't get caught with you know a near shore rockfish even though you're out deep you gotta you gotta have to know which what it is and be able to let it go so if you're catching a gopher you know outside of say september 30th you gotta you got to be able to identify that and, and release it so you can avoid any penalties or, or something like that. Let's see. But that's not all. There's some actually some more interesting stuff in here, which I think is actually some of the good news. So a little, little bit of a closure on there, but not all bad. Not all bad at all. And some of you guys will like some of this other stuff. Okay, so... Here's kind of the other real important news is that uh, there are several changes to species that have been subject to boat-based closures in the past, uh, which may offer new alternatives for boat-based anglers as early as January. So I think they're going to open this up. So year-round opportunities for ocean white fish, California scorpion fish, leopard shark, soup fin shark, Dover sole, English sole, Arrowroot flounder, spiny dogfish, skates, ratfish. What was that? Grenaders. 
fine scale cod link. I haven't even heard of some of these. Pacific cod, Pacific whiting, sable fish, uh, and thorny heads will now be open all year round in all depths statewide. So that's actually pretty huge, guys, because the so basically the California scorp scorpion fish is the sculpin. So whitefish uh, and sculpin are now available. What they're saying is is going to be available at all depths year round, even from January. So those of you guys that know, those of you guys that are in the know, you know, the whitefish were part of the ground fish complex. Um, and the um, sculpin was part of the, actually it was the sculpin not, maybe the sculpin was not included, but some of these fish were included in the ground fish closures for that three months, but not anymore. So now whitefish and sculpin, what they're saying is it should be year round, any depth whatsoever, which is pretty cool. So uh, now you can go target those fish year round where before we still had that restriction and they were off limits for those three months. Um, I think that's kind of a big win. And other fish that we've been talking about is like the Pacific cod that we haven't been able to go after. So Pacific cod, Pacific whiting, um, ratfish. <laughs> you guys are, I actually caught some ratfish in Alaska. They do look like rats, yeah. There's some creepy ass fish, but um, so that that's kind of a major change. And then there's another one too. I think you guys will find interesting. So this one, this other one was a, a kind of a win and a loss. I know TB Metal Art will be interested in this one. So boat based fishing for California sheephead will now be open from March 1st through December 31st statewide. So we still get that ban, right? The um the three month kind of have that that three month break but the bag limit regardless of fish mode will decrease from five fish to two fish so you know you guys know a couple years ago we tried fighting we were kind of fighting the sheephead bag limit thing um but we do have the, they, they didn't limit so here's the thing they didn't limit the sheep sheephead also used to be included in the, the rockfish complex for whatever reason they just put it in there but now the sheephead is you're not bound by that the near shore fish you know where you can't fish outside those five and a half months we basically we have our normal sheephead fishing time that didn't change which is nice but you can only keep two instead of five so that's a big change you guys know what was it last year um we fought really hard we even we tried to not catch in the sheephead you know we pumped the brakes on that um you know, try not to overfish them and stuff like that because again, they were getting some wonky numbers or something like that. And the CCA came in, and this year we didn't have any restrictions, so it was last year we were kind of dealing with that. We kind of policed ourselves. Uh, they didn't implement it, but it looks like this year they're still keeping them open for the longer period of time, which is cool. But they are dropping the bag limit. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I don't, I don't think I ever really caught five. I mean, I don't think I ever like kept five sheephead and maybe i don't think so i usually would release them just because i can't eat that many but so that's kind of been reduced to two that doesn't affect me so much personally just because i never really kept that much but definitely something to to think about but then the the all year changes and you'll see here where a lot of these um a lot of the terminology on here says boat based anglers that's because shore fishing from shore and spear fishing, you can take a lot of these fish. There, there is no regulations on, on the fishing. So, like if you catch one of the near shore fish or um one of these other fish from shore, you can still keep it. Pretty unlikely you're gonna catch one. Maybe in La Jolla, you can go out to the kelp and get some of the gopher fish and stuff, but uh we're primarily talking about boat-based anglers. So that talk boats, skiffs, kayaks, whenever you're like on the water in a vessel, that's where a lot of these regulations come in. So they're not they're not talking about shore-based anglers and, and stuff like that so if you can catch sheephead from the shore your bag limit is still two but they'll let you keep them but yeah coach coach warf he's probably out there catching some of the uh, some of the other ones but yeah so that, i mean that's basically the long and short of it um, we lost some time in some of the near shore fish um, but then we got unlimited time on whitefish um and cod and stuff like that so and no depth depth limits either i 
it's kind of a trade-off. I, I think it's pretty cool. So what do you guys think about it? Tell me what you think. I think it's kind of interesting. But lots to take in. And like I said, guys, read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I know it's complicating. Make sure you do your homework to avoid the fine for sure. Used to be January 1st, end of February. What was that for the um, sheep head? Todd or which which fish is that? It sounds like a lot of regulations to catch fishermen and fines. Um, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of dudes that are going to get caught for sure because it's if you so I haven't seen anybody talking about this and we're look at we're at the end of the year it's already the twenty second and there's been very little press about it and there's some pretty major changes and. You know, some people are going to go out there for sure and just not kind of be in the know. Well, two things are going to happen. They're, they're not going to know, and they're going to be catching come right September, October. They're going to think it's still rock fishing season. They're going to be out there near shore catching fish and probably get some tickets for sure. I, I could definitely see that. Some people are definitely going to learn the hard way, so you got to educate yourself. You know, they don't do – unless you're going to the government website and looking – you're really not going to know a lot of these things are going on. Unfortunately, they don't make it a, they don't do a real good job of getting the information out on the flip side. A lot of these people too, are going to be missing out when you're going to roll up with all these white fish and all these other fish. And people are going to be like, what are you doing? Dude, it's February. You can't keep these fish. You'd be like, yes, you can. Cause some of the laws have changed. So there is actually, now there is opportunity year round that we didn't have. So I, I think that's kind of cool personally you know and definitely some new species we get to go after but yeah there's, there's definitely gonna be some finds out there for sure kiwi reacts Ooh, welcome sounds all bad for kayakers yeah that's true salty yeah so these you guys are bringing up good points uh half day and full day sport boats are gonna have to adjust depending on the time of the year yeah definitely Need to increase the size from 14 inches uh, instead of two bag. Yeah. Yeah. Make them bit. What Todd is talking about, instead of decreasing the bag limit, making the size larger, you know, I, 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 yeah, because the sheep head size is it's pretty small. What is it, 12 inches? That's not that big for a sheep head. And if people were catching five sheep head just on that 12, that's not a very big fish. But 14, you're probably right on that. You know, keep the five, but then, use it use a bump up the size i think probably would have been a better better solution myself because one of the things is people start throwing because what happens is this was some of the things that um some of the rockfish problems that you see is that there's when when you like put on the bag limits people are leery about like well, what they catch and keep and what happens is you get yeah, so here, here's something to think about. When sheephead, there's dealing with the sheephead thing, personally, when I've caught them, almost every sheephead you catch has barrow trauma, right? Um, their intestines usually always come out of their ass. It's like almost always, even, not even when they're that deep. I mean, we're talking 50 feet deep or less. Like, you know, I've brought up the sheephead with barrow trauma. And that's okay because you would just, you would keep it, right? If it was 13 inches or whatever, you throw it in your bag. But now this kind of inadvertently creates a problem because, or it can, I, I didn't say it will, but it, it potentially can because if you can only keep two sheephead, there's going to be a lot of sheephead thrown back that likely are just going to die because people aren't going to want to keep the smaller sheephead. So now that you only have two instead of the five, before you would catch, you know, three that were 12 inches, 13 inches, you throw them in your bag, even though you were still looking for the big one. Well, now that you can only keep two, if you pull in one that's 12 inches, are you going to keep it? Normally you probably would have because you, your bag limit is five. Well, now you're probably just going to toss it back. But the problem with, even though it's a legal fish, you see what I'm saying? People aren't going to catch, I'm, I shouldn't say people aren't, some people aren't going to catch the legal fish and keep it keep their two and then move on and say, okay, I'm done. I got my limits. 
No, people are going to be catching illegal fish and they're going to be throwing them back if they're not big enough. The problem when you throw a sheephead back is that they have a reduced chance of living. They're not hardy like a bass. They're not like a calico. You know, you can take a calico out. It's not a big deal. They don't have even lingcod and stuff. They don't suffer barrel trauma. You just throw it back. But uh, that, that's that's one of my fears with this thing is that you're going to catch one that's legal, but you're not going to like it. So you're going to keep tossing. Or how are you going to, you're going to end up tossing three back looking for your big one, one big enough to keep. And if people aren't descending these things properly, you're just going to have a lot of dead waste. So in the end, that begs the question is like, what did it solve? Right. It's, it's that whole kind of gray area of, of fishing is if half of those that you threw back died, it's like, well, what, what was the point? You know, did you, what are we actually conserving? So um, there is kind of that negative aspect to it when, when they lower bag sizes, because people just aren't going to keep what normally would have been a legal fish. So definitely something to look out for. You see that in uh, rock fishing too. You see like a lot of these, um, the small rock fish, like just floating down the water because the people catch them, even though there's not like a size limit on rockfish, there's a bag limit. So people just, they toss the small ones, but they don't bother um, descending them properly and stuff like that. And you just see like this trail of like small rockfish just floating on the top that, I mean, they get eaten by the seagulls and sea lions. It's not like it goes to waste per se, but still just basically killing a lot of the fish, which is crazy. Yeah. And then salty was saying so bad, bad news for kayakers and then cal said yeah the half day and the full days yeah because what they're talking about guys is when they're we're talking about the near shore rockfish the ones that have really been hit the most with the regulations so when you're on a kayak it's hard to get out that far past the uh, rca zone if you look on the site you can see there's like a line of where the zone is and where you can fish but with that near shore fishing shortened to only the five and a half months are you really going to be able to go after this, the slope and shelf rock fish um, after that five months, even though they're still legal to fish, you have to go outside of a certain zone in order to be able to fish them. So boat fishermen will probably be okay. You can zip out there. It's not that big of a deal. And then cave dog was saying, yeah, half day and full day sport boats are going to have to adjust. Yeah, for sure. Cause I see those guys out there all the time, right? Like uh, the dolphin and what was it like? the sea watch or something like that or even even here in oceanside um you see like the the oceanside boats and dana point they all stay within that uh real shallow zone and even up i see them all the time i, I go out i haven't been out in a couple of weeks but last time i did they're all just right outside of point loma uh, basically fishing for rockfish you know um and right now that would that would be legal so in 2023 they're not gonna be able to fish that which is interesting because a half day boat's probably not going to be able to make it out to the fishing grounds after that five and a half months. But white, if whitefish are still still fishable and sculpting, so if as long as they know how to target those, they can still get on them. But then again, you go to the whole thing with waste, right? So what are you going to do? Anybody that fishes here in Southern California, you understand a lot of the whitefish uh, and sculpting, they kind of live more in the flats but a lot of times they're mixed in with the rockfish as well so you're going to get a lot of bycatch that's just going to get tossed back and may or may not have a chance to live so a lot of that onus is going to be put on i think um like the anglers to actually descend them have descending devices take care of the fish but it's a lot of work to do that you know a lot of times you got to have a dedicated device already hooked up and like a rig just to descend fish because it's it's kind of a pain in the ass to hook on a thing back and forth trying to do it. So if you are going to fish within those times, I'd probably recommend getting, getting a descending device for sure. And I don't know if that was, I don't remember if it's law or not. I always carry a descending device on me and I don't know if it's required or not currently to descend um, fish outside your bag limit. I, I don't really know how that works. I can't remember if you're supposed to have one or not have one. I always carry one, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm not really sure if that's a law or not. Sounds good. This is whole for sure. Yeah, man. It's the laws here are like they're so freaking convoluted. It's crazy.
the previous oh the previous groundfish closer closure i thought oh it was always the three months january 1st through or was it march 1st you could be right todd so the end of february so january was it yeah was it march 1st i think you're right i think you're right todd so that they did add a month to the normal fishing i don't even remember anymore i know it was march but yeah was it only the two month closer I didn't even catch that, but yeah, I think you are right. So they essentially just added like another month. Uh, so instead of March 1st to March 31st, first. Interesting. Could be correct. Put my charts up early and make all aware. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, we're probably going to have to. <laughs> I think you're going to have to just to, if you wanted the fish to live, that's what I worry about, man. I just, I don't want to see a lot of these fish that just get tossed back because people don't want them, you know? I think you have to have means of descending. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, because I mean, there's so many ways to descend. You can like just, um, like you file down a hook and you can make your own, you know, like have like a, put a weight on it and stuff like that. Yeah, interesting stuff, guys. Some big changes. Uh, lots of confusing changes, but just uh, be aware of it. Yeah, so January 31st. Yeah, you're right, Todd. I totally just lost a month. So they, so it is shortened either way, even even the all-depth stuff. But you know, how do you guys feel about the, the new fishing depth? I mean, I'm kind of excited about it. Um, that aspect of it, like the... I mean, just the fathoms open, I think is cool. And then catching like some of the cod and stuff like that and hitting some of these slopes. Um, I think it's definitely gonna be electric real time for sure. <laughs> Cause if we're going 600 feet was already pretty gnarly. You're dealing that up by hand. I know some of these dudes up and down in Florida, I mean, they're fishing reefs like a thousand feet deep, but, and we got some reef here too, guys. That's actually deep that we're gonna be able to fish now. So uh, that's pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to some of this cotton stuff. So it, it, at least I can say is usually we get shafted. And I will say why we we've lost quite a bit. We gained some too. I think it was it's kind of a fair trade. I mean, they were going to they were going to take it anyway. So it, at least we got some concession out of it. So and thanks for everybody that fought for that. I know CCA and all these people that are involved. So thank you. And they didn't just take us, break us through the coals and, and take everything and basically throw us out in the wind. We, we did get a little something, so you can't complain about that. It is what it is. Won't be able to reach in my kayak and I don't have the arms for it. Salty. There's only one fix. You have to buy a boat. So you guys, this is a perfect excuse. Tell all your wives. Tell your significant others you need a boat. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to fish unless I get a boat now. I got to be able to get that depth. It's time for boats, boys. I'm going to start a boating club. Kayaks are a thing of the past. Deep sea fishing. Just catching up on the chat here. Descenders, but march off. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Let's see if we had any. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. Like I said, I'm not the expert. I'm reading it just like you guys, but that's the best I understand it. And see if I have any Instagram questions come through. I think I did. Who was it? Um, oh, someone was a comment. Just said, "Lots of Mr. Martinez. Some changes good, some bad. Yeah, definitely, I agree with that." And then Jig Junkies asked, "Did I buy myself anything for Christmas?" <laughs> I didn't. Not fishing wise. Um, man, I haven't even really thought about Christmas this year. It's crazy, but uh, I haven't bought myself anything specific. Have you guys? 
I'm pretty bad about it. He's like usually just it's weird because I got the baby, so it's like I haven't thought about like Christmas and birthday. Like me and my wife, we haven't even like celebrated birthdays and all that for like probably years at this point. Um even Christmas, like it was pretty low key. We would just buy something for ourselves and be like, hey, I'm buying this for myself for Christmas. But now we got the little one and it's like we'll probably be back to the gift giving ritual again. Um I think definitely on my Christmas list though is going to be, and this is what I might buy for myself, which is a good question. So I have not bought anything for myself, but fishing related, I want to know what you guys want for Christmas, what you're getting yourself for Christmas. But I think I need, I, I'm honestly going to consider an electric reel. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Cheating, fair, or is it fair game? Now, electric reels are actually, they're illegal in some states, believe it or not. California, they're not, you can use them. Um, but if we're going to be fishing, you know, a thousand feet deep, that's no joke. And I'm busting out 600 gram jigs for sure. But I don't think I'm about that life. Reeling up a thousand feet, <laughs> 700,000 feet. That's freaking crazy, man. So I think electric reel is uh go for swords. I've never fished for swordfish before. That's pretty crazy. Right? It was like years. I didn't even like put on like, uh, the Christmas tree or nothing. It was like we're like, which we should we put one up now? And oh, we've got like an old plastic one that we unpacked. It was pretty funny, but yeah, we totally like got away from all that stuff. And now it's like we we got the Christmas tree up. It's pretty funny. Back on it. When I was little, the cataracts for trying were on everyone's land. Carve a good piece of haddock or cod. I'm not into electric reels. Have you tried the electric? Have you fished deep? Or are you just not into the electric reels in general? Because I've done jigging. Like for a full day. At like 600 feet. Even like a couple weeks ago. I went down to Mexico. And like the south. or um, uh, Yeah, the, the south nine. And it was like pretty deep. Like 600, 500 feet. And I forgot how deep it was, man. It's like. You sit there and jig it, but if you're in like a dead spot, you're like, all right, I got to reel up. But you don't want to do that too many times. It's just like, it's so much time. It's so much cranking. Because I went on a trip and these dudes had electric reels and some other guys were kind of like laughing at him and stuff like that. But dude, by the end of the day, I, I know I've told this story. People were like, dude, these dudes, they know how it's done. It was over at uh, San Nicolas where it was like probably like 500 feet. Crazy. Sea do fish, bro. Those things are, were, are pretty cool, dude. Like, um, I honestly looked at those a little bit before I bought my boat. Like, I was like, oh, is it a got to get a cheaper compromise or stuff like that? Especially the new fish pro where it's like, it's got a seat like in the back that you can prop up and it swivels like a bass seat. So you can like, it sits up and then you can like turn on it just like a traditional seat that the bass boats have. It, it's pretty cool. Definitely a wet ride. I don't know about winter. I don't know. Danny's got the sea do and I see some of the dudes out there. They're pretty sweet, though. Oh, yeah. The, the golf is deep. Yeah, I see some of you guys out there. It's crazy. And what you want to know what's funny is out here, we've never let so we've had um, regulations for fishing because I don't know if you know, like the Pacific is the reason the Pacific was so cold is because it's so deep. The Pacific, the Marianas Trench is here and it's like you can literally there's parts where you go like a mile off the coast here in California and it's legit like three, 4,000 feet deep. Like it just, it falls off. It's like, it's kind of eerie. Uh, even parts like a half mile offshore, a quarter mile, like the finger in Carlsbad or even like that, um, uh, like the cave right there in the, or not the cave, but the Canyon for La Jolla, it's like gets up to 1500 feet, like instantly Pacific's deep, man. It's like super, super deep. Which also makes it cold. That's why we got totally different fish from like the East Coast and West Coast. But yeah, and so when they're saying like no depth regulations, like that's nuts. Like we're, I'm gonna, like, do they really mean that? Are we gonna go down straight up, see if we can hit the, I just wanna see like how deep we can go and hit the bottom and just pull out some absolute sea monster. <laughs> this is pretty cool. And will they eat a jig? Probably with the, if it's got enough glow on it, 
they'll probably be able to see it. But yeah, that's gonna be crazy. Totally different fish because I know like the East Coast they've got like tile fish and those big snapper and stuff, and we don't have those here. Crazy man. Oh yeah, dude, it's crazy. I've never fished the Gulf before. I'm gonna have to get out there, catch some redfish. I have caught redfish and drum and stuff, but that was in uh, like Florida and South Carolina. <laughs> That's fun. Out of New England taste. That's crazy. Oh, anyways, guys, thanks for joining. Hopefully, you guys learned something today. Um, just want to say Merry Christmas. It's been a good year. Thank you guys for all the support. You guys are always awesome. Uh, looking forward to fishing with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, always hit me up on Instagram. Go to submissionfishing.com if you want to buy some slow death jigs. Get in that slow pitch game. Like I said, Spotty Bull's coming up too. And um, yeah, thank you for another year, guys. Thank you for all the support. Uh, we really appreciate it. And probably next time I see you, it'll be next year. And if I get some updates on the fishing regulations, uh, or if there's anything else, if there's any, I'll check out. Like I said, this is mostly saltwater stuff. I don't even know if there was any changes in freshwater or anything like that. I'll have to take a look. Like I said, I don't fish freshwater so much, but I'll do another, um, maybe if I can get some clarification on some things too, um, tighten them up. But with that being said, by the time we're fishing, if you want to fish under some of these old regulations, uh, now's the time you've only got, it's the 22nd, right? Seven days or something like that to go fish some of the near shore fish, because you won't be able to do that after this year during this time of year. So, um, definitely go down there and take advantage of it. Of course, we got the hack. We always can go down to Mexico. We shoot down there real quick. It takes me like 15, 20 minutes on my boat. I can be into Mexico. So they, well, we got options for the other stuff, but a lot of our uh, the kayak brothers, you know, like I said, I rode that kayak for like two years and I was in the same boat, man, where we couldn't, couldn't get on a lot of those fish. So I definitely feel your pain, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure out some other type of fishing. Doug Rubin, happy Hanukkah. Definitely love big reds. Hell yeah, dude. Those are fun as hell. Merry Christmas. Just found your channel. Yeah, thanks for joining, man. I really appreciate it. We got a couple guys in here from uh, East Coast that watch, so maybe we'll hook up sometime. I got a place out in Florida uh, that I bought this year, so I go kind of back and forth a couple times a year, do some fishing out there. Yeah, dude. Like it's so we launched out of San Diego. I, I launched my boat in San Diego. I can get down to Mexico and I just haul ass down there. Like legit took me like maybe 20 minutes last time. And then it's totally different regulation. So that, that's kind of like the hack if we get tired of the, the California nonsense, but it is what it is. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Dave rage. Merry Christmas to you. Happy Hanukkah, Doug Rubin. And uh, hopefully you guys get everything you want for Christmas. Get some fishing gear. And we'll see you guys out there in the water. Until next time, we'll get your black belts and fishing. Oost. No East Coast on the golf side. It's on the golf side of Florida. Nice. Yeah, so I'm on the um, – I've never fished the golf side of Florida. I got a house in St. Augustine, Florida, which is the East Coast, the Atlantic side. And I know it's different on the golf side, but I'm still like – I still have a lot to learn when it comes to that fishing. I've been out there fishing a couple times, but it's like – I've yet to get on the golf, but definitely on my list for sure. I'm going to get out there for, we'll have to hook up and do some fishing. Show me the ropes. All right, Arnie. Oos. Okay, guys. Till next time. Happy New Year.